Trick two. Hey, let's talk about arrays versus strings. So in the last video I made, we talked a little bit about how arrays work. Now I'm going to talk about how arrays are similar and how they're different from strings. So let's start with uh, first a quick overview of what both of them are. Uh, arrays are a means to store many of any type. So it could be a primitive type. It could be an object. I can have an array of characters, which is basically a string. I could also have an array of strings. I could also have an array of an array of strings. So they're pretty versatile, whereas a string is just a collection of characters. Uh, strings are a little bit easier to create, but let's talk about both of them real fast. So if I wanted to create an array, and we're going to try to keep it similar to strings, so we're going to make a care array. I would say I want a care, but not just one. I want an array of cares. Let's call it uh, cars. Uh, and I'd have to say equals new to make space for how many I need. And then what I would probably do is say care array, and let's make it uh, six. So it's big enough to hold six different characters in it. So what happens when I do that is I make a block that's labeled cares. I make six contiguous blocks of memory. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, and in this first block, I end up with a reference to the beginning of the memory there. Now this is strikingly similar to strings. If I make a string, let's do this a different color, so it's a little easier to distinguish. I would say something like string uh, word equals, in this case, let's say hello with an exclamation point. Well, what's happening here is I'm going to get a box called word that is going to be a reference to six more boxes. One, two, three, four, five, six. Whoops, that's too many. And each of those is going to have H, E, L, L, O, and an exclamation point in it. And this block is just a reference to the beginning of that memory location. So, so far, these two look very similar. Uh, the way that I make them is a little bit different, but what's happening in memory is more or less the same. Now, you'll notice when I made the care array, it ended up being blank. When I made the string array, it started out with things in it. I could take a different approach with the care array. I can get rid of that. And instead, what I can do is provide a list of the things I want to put in. So in this case, I could say H, comma, E, comma, L, comma, L, comma, O, comma, exclamation point. And in that case, so now I'm giving the actual list of characters I want to put in. It would make those six blocks and pre-populate it with those specific characters. So right off the bat, it looks a lot easier to make a string than to make an array if all I'm doing is sticking things in there. So right off the bat, that's one thing that distinguishes the two. Uh, let's talk about changing arrays and changing characters uh, or changing strings. Now, we have a big problem when it comes to strings. Once a string is created, it cannot be changed. So that's a big X there. Once I make the string, word is hello. I cannot go and swap letters out. Now, this is a little bit misleading because if you look in the Java documentation for the string class, you're going to see that one of the uh, instance side methods is called replace. So for instance, I can say word dot replace, and we can replace, say, uh, L's with P's. So you would think by it being called replace, or it might need replace, so I'd have to double check. But you think by saying replace, it would change those L's to P's. But you'd be wrong. What this method does is it returns a new set of six characters. That would say, in this case, hepo. But the original word and the original string would be intact. It would not change. So that's a really important distinction because it's actually very easy to change elements of an array. If I wanted to, for example, change these two L's to P's, all I need to do is go to their index, which in this case is two and three, and I would say pairs two equals P, and cares three equals P, and now it actually changes that array. So 
Arrays are really useful because you can get in there and you can manipulate them and you can make those changes, which you can't do with a string. Now, right off the bat, you might say, well, it's a lot harder to make a character array and I can change it. And for a string, it's a lot easier to change, or it's a, it's a lot harder to change it, but it's a lot easier to make it. So if you're not making changes, strings are the way to go. Well, there's other things you might consider. For example, suppose I said hello and I went, oh, you know what, I, I should probably say more than that. I shouldn't just end with hello. I want to say hello, how are you? Well, I could take a string and actually tack onto it. I can make it bigger. So although I can't modify what's there, I can add to the end. So if I were, for example, to say word plus equals how are you, A question mark, I suppose. I'm going to get that in here. How are you? I cannot do that with an array. When an array gets its size set, which I did right here in the first version of creating it, and then I did by giving it this list, the second version, it's done. This is a hard stop. So I cannot add to an array. Now, that said, I could make a brand new array that was bigger. So I could suppose, figure out how long this is, add it to the length of my current array, make a brand new one, and then plop every single letter in the original array into the second one. But you can see that's a lot of work where I might not want to put that time and effort in. So again, it seems like there's some places where strings are better, sometimes where characters are better. Let's look at one more thing. Uh, that's transversing an array, transversing a string. Suppose I just wanted to go and see each element of the string each character individually, each character of the array. Well, for an array, I would probably use a for loop, and I'd have two options. So I could use a traditional for loop or for each loop. So I'm gonna use over here for each loop, and for the string, I'm gonna use a traditional for loop. So I'm gonna say for each character C that's in pairs, uh, how about we just print it? System, oops dot out dot print c all right so that's going to print every letter one at a time uh, it's pretty easy to go through an array uh, for each loops work for it because an array is a collection of smaller items so it's really easy to say i want to look at each item in the bigger array for string suppose we use that traditional for loop or int i equals zero I is less than word, oops, word dot length, parentheses, uh, I plus plus, and we could say system dot out dot print, and now we got to go and get the individual letter that we want, so we'd say, hey, word dot what character is at position I, that's going to print each letter of the string as well. Now, we can do that same traversal with an array. Uh, all we would do is replace the word.careat i with a cares square bracket i. So that's a little bit simpler. The you know, other change, and this is a little bit weird, is that whereas word has this dot length method, for cares, you would say dot length without parentheses. Now the reason for that is the length of an array is actually a publicly available data member, whereas the length of a string is a method of, uh, that you call. And that might seem like a nuanced uh, distinction, but the nice thing is when you're programming and you put the wrong one in, usually your IDE will identify it for you and you'll say, oh, this one needs parentheses or I add a parentheses and I don't need it. So what you should be able to see from this comparison is that strings and arrays are very similar uh, and a little bit different. In general, if you're thinking about manipulating the guts of something, you're probably leaning towards an array. If you're thinking about just storing something, uh, you're probably thinking about a string. So I hope this helped clarify the difference between the two. Bye-bye.